massive disappointment. There are a lot of things that are an absolute mystery to me about Salty Crafter. Yes, we're all Salty Crafter at hearts, but I'm talking about the Salty Crafter. From what I've heard, she has night vision. So she's able to find craft and crap kits in total darkness during her midnight walks. And apparently during a full moon, she gets way saltier. And so this week's craft kit under review is Lore DIY's Balloon Unicorn Kit. For all you Lore DIY fans, just a reminder, this has nothing to do with Lore DIY herself. However, it has to do with this kit and does it offer something interesting for us crafters to learn from. So if you have a tendency to be like, you're just jealous because she has more subscribers than you. The answer is no. Remember, if you want a shout out in my Friday videos, don't forget to hashtag Nerdification Squad in the comment section below within the first 45 minutes of a video's release or hashtag nerdycrafter on Instagram or Twitter anytime with any of your creations. That way you become a grain of salt in the salt shaker family. Our food of choice, salty fries today. So this kit cost me, hang on, $20 Canadian. So the idea behind this kit is that we should be able to make our own balloon unicorn plushie. One of my biggest disappointments in the felt plushie kit is that everything was done for us. We weren't even given the opportunity to cut out the patterns. I'm uh, worried about this one. All right, let's see what we get inside. Here's what we get in this kit. A long tubular piece of white fabric, kinda like a sock. Some strings of fabric. A smushed glue bottle. A glittery unicorn horn. I know you guys have your mind in the gutter, so I'll let you name this crafter with a horn. Some string, sequins, some stuffing, and same as the previous Lore DIY kit, are we gonna use it this time? Time to read the instructions. So I'm pretty good at following instructions. I promise? Maybe not. No, I'm pretty good. <coughs> Choking on salt. <laughs> so according to the instructions, the first thing we have to do is cut this twine into eight inch pieces. Look at that. We actually get to do something for ourselves. That's a good thing. It doesn't say how many we need. So is it all of it? No, 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 don't, don't do it. Don't tangle. I highly doubt we're gonna need all of this, so I just cut out eight pieces, and if we need more, then we got, we got all that. All right, so already one of the first encountered issues with the instructions is that we're supposed to stuff about three and a half-ish inches for the unicorn, but we have to go through all of this. And I'm pretty sure the stick we got, it ain't going in there that far. Okay, this is how far our stick is gonna go. That's how far we should have gone. Now, I think the instructions could have been done in a smarter way by actually telling us to put in some stuffing before we tied up the nose. At least that way this part is done and it will be closer to the edge as we're we're working our way that way. See my dilemma here? I'm stuffing my unicorn. I'm, I'm pushing the stuffing and it's like, nope, that is not, just not. It wasn't that bad. Could have been done way more easily. So as you can see, there are very specific measurements in order to get those pieces stuffed and put together. One of the annoyances that I had is I wasn't sure how to get those ears standing up in the way that they are in the picture. Was I supposed to twist them? Was I supposed to turn it? Was I supposed to do something else? Because yeah, that's that's the ears I got. So I had to retie it because the eight inch string was just not big enough. I'm not done yet, but I do have a bit of a worry. Now, in the picture of the box, the actual critter right here, the unicorn, is standing. It is straight. This is completely loopy. I don't think it's standing very well. So I'm really curious to see if it's actually going to stand. I am down to my last bit of stuffing, and I have two legs to go. I don't think there's enough. And to make things just a little more interesting, the stitching at the end is starting to come off. So the last two legs should be three and a half inches each. But I only have enough stuffing to make one leg that is three inches big. 
Luckily, I have my own stash of stuffing, so I still want to finish this project, but do keep in mind, not enough stuffing for its own project. How can you have a DIY kit that makes you go out and buy more material? I'm stuffing this, not even too much. It's, it's still droopy in some parts. It's not like I'm overstuffing. I wasn't lying. Here's my stash. All right, this whole tail ordeal is extremely frustrating because when I watched the tutorial video, in one part, the whole leg is actually disconnected and then in another scene, it's actually put together. So my question is, when do we put it? Because in the written instructions, it says to include the tail in the last bit of the leg. So I should not have tied this part. Why are the instructions so confusing? So here's our completed body, but as you may or may not have noticed, my um, unicorn has uh, sleeping problems. Wake up! Wake up! Come on, buddy! So the only things left to do are to put the horn. So we're gonna do that with the glue. They say that we should be able to hold the horn for a couple of minutes by the time the glue actually dries. I'm a little skeptical on that. And if it doesn't work, there are consequences. that's a reasonable enough time to stop holding the horn because I'm starting to get bored. And surprise, surprise! Ah, dang it! How much longer do I have to hold it? We're gonna take some of that twine and see what happens once I'm done decorating it. Alright, so it says leave sufficient time for the glue to dry. How much time is that? So because I am a generous salty crafter, I'm going to let this sit overnight. So the next time you see me, I'm gonna look like I just woke up. The next day. We are the next day and this is Poo Face here. Let's just get over the fact that I look like Poo Face every day. Minus the extra cat hair on my shirt, you probably couldn't tell the difference. Alright, so I haven't touched it yet. I am really excited to see if that glue actually works because this is the condition I left it in. I don't know how much I should pull, but yeah, it doesn't take too much to remove it. For the sequins, they're on there. And the frown is still there, so our salty unicorn is still intact. Time to find out, is this kit mm, worth it? For those of you new to the Salty Crafter family, we grains love to start with cons. We live on the salt and the salt is what sustains our life. There's quite a list of cons, so get your salt water or cookie or fries ready, because we're gonna dump quite a bit. The first con is the way that this is packaged. When I opened it, the first thing I noticed was that everything was just kind of thrown into a bag. I kid you not, I half expected that the sequins be also dumped in there and I would have to pick each and every one of them. That's how lazily it was packaged on the inside. So the twine was actually a mess. I don't know why it wasn't wrapped around a piece of cardboard. That could have made things a lot easier. If there's one thing I hate and probably why I hate sewing it is having to untangle strings. The instruction pictures. What's the point of putting instruction pictures if they're going to be in gray tone, muddy, and absolutely unclear? And because everything is in gray tone, you don't know which piece of information is more important than the other. Still, with the instructions, they are inconsistently organized. Sometimes it starts with for the nose and then it gives instructions and then the next number you'll go straight into instructions and it'll be like this was for the head and you're like why isn't it consistent? You think I'm done with the instructions? The answer is no! When it comes to stuffing the head, instead of having to go all the way from the back to get to the front, why not prepare us by putting a little bit more of the stuffing from the nose, tie it, and then have the head already stuffed. That way we're kind of already getting, you know, a little ahead. The string was all supposed to be cut into eight inch 
twine. For some parts, it was okay. For other parts, it just wasn't long enough or it made, let's leeway into the next con. So because some of the string was actually only eight inches long, sometimes eight inches isn't big enough. It was actually really challenging to tie a piece with only an eight inch string. So because some parts were bulkier and the string was too short, it made it so that my fingers started to hurt. You really needed a longer string so that you can actually have enough strength to pull it all together. Ooh boy, you gave me a craft kit with not enough stuffing to complete the project. I just don't understand why I had to go supplement with my own materials to finish a craft kit that is supposed to be complete within itself. Luckily there was extra fabric at the end, but if that wasn't the case and kids were probably measuring it just a little longer than it should have been, it's quite possible that the end of the actual tail would have been broken because the fabric was actually coming apart. Oh, we are back! with the instructions. There are instruction tips that tell you later on, make sure that you keep some stuffing for the horn. However, there's just not enough stuffing for the unicorn, let alone for the horn. So even if I had put just a little bit aside for the horn, my unicorn would have still been incomplete. Now, I'm not sure if there was a smarter way to do this because on the box itself, it says twist and tie. When do we twist and what do we twist? Are we twisting just for the ears? Are we twisting everything to make it tighter? Because because in the actual instruction sheet, there is no mention of twisting it to make it tighter. I think this part may have disappointed me even more is the fact that on the box, it looks like a standing piece of unicorn balloon, but it was just not standing. So I felt like I was misled into believing that I would get an end product that could stand, but that's just not the case at all. Now, you would think that the video instruction would be great and don't get me wrong, it was really fun to watch with the upbeat music and super colorful and it was just going very quickly. But in one scene, there was actually a part where the legs were already tied and then they were making the tail and then the next scene the legs were untied and then they put in the tail are the legs supposed to be together or not because according to the sheet they're not supposed to have been tied this could be a con for some of you but for me it really was a con there was just a lack of colors in general i know some of you would be like but unicorns are white a in my defense unicorns don't exist so why not have something colorful if we're not going to have colors in the actual body of the unicorn maybe at least in the sequins or mane, eyes, hooves, something at least to give a bit of a movement. The glue. It smelled like oatmeal, so I wasn't quite sure what kind of glue it is, but the video and also on the instruction sheets, it does say hold it a bit until it holds. But I held it for five minutes, kept it tied on for another 10 to 15 minutes. It was not holding. Unless I had actually put the string around it and left it overnight, I highly doubt it was going to be a stable piece. This is where it feels like, again, for the other kits, they probably expected you to take out the glue guns. Who wants to wait a couple of hours holding a piece of horn on a head? Not me. The instruction calls this a pillow. We have a problem with that. It's such a flimsy piece that my cats won't lay down on it. I can't use it as a cushion or support. It's a plushie. Don't, don't call something a pillow unless there's a support to it. And for my last Con for $20, this kit feels like a droopy, disappointing, colorless mess. I just don't see why I would actually use this kit instead of going to buy a really long sock, like a knee sock, from any store and making a plushie out of it. And if I go out to buy my own stuffing, I'll have enough. So far, the Lore DIY kits that I've done, so the felt plushies and the unicorn pillow all start out really well. There's this hope that something's going to be good, but then at the end, it's just a massive disappointment. I'm not just all salty. There are some pros. The first pro, it does have playability. So as I was putting this together, it did take me more or less about an hour and 15 minutes. And if you want to wait for the glue, it will take a little longer. We do have an instructional video. So that's something that just wasn't properly highlighted in the instructional sheet. They should promote something that they spent time to put together. So yeah, the instruction video, it was good. And the last pro is that I was actually thinking of doing other projects similar to this by using a sock. That's just the thing that came to mind. It's not like they taught you something in that kit, 
but automatically when you see a tube piece of cloth, you think of a sock. So the pro for that is you automatically start gaining your own knowledge, not because of the kit, but because of the materials in there. So keeping in mind all the cons and the fact that on YouTube, you have some amazing plushy tutorials that don't require any kind of material other than dollar store stuff, this kit was a massive disappointment. And so I would give it a two on 10 dorks. I know some of you will say that I was either harsh or generous, most of you saying that I'm too generous with two dorks, but you still get something out of it. Are you getting the something that you expected? The answer is no. Are you getting something that you can use? The answer is no. Are you gaining any knowledge? The answer is no. But it is something that you can do if you're looking for an activity. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you want to watch a salty review, check it up here. And if you want to watch a crafting video, check it down here. I did the first episode of Pimp My Sculpture, so if you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out. Until then, I will see you in the next video.